Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's lesson we will be diving a little bit deeper in the topic and we will be working on procedural generation. And do not worry, we will go through this step by step so it will not be confusing at all. Now, we still have the errors that we keep getting from our tile map and we need to fix that. So all you need to do is select your tile map layer, go to tile set and Next to this exclamation mark, click on the three dots and click on remove tiles outside the texture. If you do not have this, if the exclamation mark did not pop up or like the remove tiles outside the texture button is disabled and you still like have all of the errors, then it is a bug with Godot for some reasons. You need to restart the engine and then it will work. So yeah, now that we're done with that, we can jump into our generation. Now, the way we want to handle the generation is I want to have a node in the world scene that will handle everything when it comes to spawning the rooms, uh, creating the map itself, handling the minimap, everything. So what I want to do is we're going to add a node, not a node 2D, just node, and we're going to call this generation. Gen generation sorry about that and let's gonna let's give it a script we're gonna save the script in the scripts folder as always and let's hit create now we're gonna start with some simple variables and these variables are going to be the var map height or map width and it is going to be an integer and let's set it by default to 7 this is gonna be how wide is our map, and we're gonna do seven. So map height, and we're basically gonna do the same thing because I want it to be symmetrical. So we're gonna do seven by seven. We're gonna make a variable for rooms to generate. And let's set this to default 12. So we want 12 rooms per level. Now, you want a variable called room count. It is going to be integer and it is zero. And this count will only go up when we do actually spawn rooms. So we're going to do var rooms instantiated. And this is also going to be an int. We won't set it up to anything yet until we actually start instantiating rooms later on in the script. We also want the position of the first room. So we're going to save it right here. I'm going to do first room pause and we're going to save it in a vector two variable. Now we want a var called map, and this is basically going to be an array. We also want a variable and another array that will hold all of the instances or the nodes of the rooms that we did spawn. So we're gonna do room nodes. Now we're gonna do array. Now, in our game, we want enemies to spawn in the room, as well as coins and hearts. Hearts are the stuff that you use to heal. So we're gonna create something called spawn chance here. So we're gonna do export var enemy spawn chance and it is going to be a float we're going to do export var coin spawn chance it is also going to be a float and export var heart spawn chance also a float now we also want to export three more variables and they are going to be export var Max enemies per room is going to be of type int. And the same thing here, var max hearts per room. And it is also an int. And export var max coins per room. And it is also of type int. Now, I'll, I will come back to the script in a little bit because we need to do something else for now, because we need to import the room scene that we will use to create the map. So we're going to do onReady var room scene 
and it's going to be of type tag team. And we want to load something. But for now, we did not create the room, so we cannot really load it. So let's actually go and create this room. And to do that, we're going to create a new scene, 2D scene, and let's call this room. Now, I want to link the first the world, not the actual world, but we're going to do uh, make local. We're going to save the base here. And we're going to delete everything else. I just wanted the base tile map to be saved here. And this is going to be our base tile map. We want to do some editing to it though, because in our base tile map, we want to have doors in each direction. So we're going to delete this. We're going to delete not that one. We actually need that one back. So we're going to like so, like so, and like so. This is our base tile map. Now we want to duplicate it and we want to create a pathway over here and delete everything else. And what this is, it's going to be north door. So this is basically the door to the northern path. And we want to do this for every single one of these. So we're going to do south door. And we want, oh, sorry, we forgot to duplicate it. And we forgot to delete these as well, because you need each one to just have like one door. So this is Western door. West door. We're going to duplicate it. And we're going to do East door. And why we did that, as you can see, if we hide, let's actually bring our base again. Let's select our base. This is what we see if we deselect everything, right? But if I remove the east door, we only have three pathways. If I remove the west door, well, like so. And it's still missing one more thing, and that is the walls. So we're gonna duplicate, oh, we're gonna duplicate the base again. We're gonna select this and do like so. Let's remove everything else though. And that is basically going to be called West Wall. We want to duplicate the West Wall. And we want an East Wall. Remove this. Duplicate. North Wall. Let's remove that, let's duplicate, close it over here, and let's call this the south wall. And now if we deselect everything, you can see that it is closed, but if I remove the south wall, we have a pathway to the south. If I remove the east wall, we have a pathway to the east. And let's remove the north door and the west door. See? Now it looks more like a map. And we're basically going to utilize this technique to create a bunch of rooms that are interconnected with each other. And that way we can generate our own map. So yeah, this is going to be it. And we will do... Next time we will actually start working on the generation code. But let's, let's actually save this scene. Let's save it in the scenes folder. Or actually no, let's actually make a new folder. Call it nodes. And let's save it in the notes folder. So yeah. Hello everyone and welcome back. Now that we created our room node, we can now reference the noom the <laughs> room node, sorry. We can reference the room node over here in the load function. We can go to nodes, room, and drag and drop it over here. It comes with the extra 
thingies here, so we gotta remove them. And we're gonna remove this one. Perfect. Now that we have it loaded, we can keep on going with the generation. So let's actually create a funk ready, which will set up our map array. So funk ready, it is a void. And in here, we want to do for i in range map width. And we also do, gonna do for g in range map. Oh, I did two points here. My bad. Map height. And in here, I want to do map dot map i dot append false i forgot to actually append to make here so we're gonna do map append and we're gonna do parentheses so this is basically gonna turn our array into a 2d array and it's gonna fill it up with fall with like a boolean and it's gonna be set to false so our map array is going to be set to false in the beginning. Now, I want to change the seed. Since we want a random generation to have a set seed, that will change every time. Or in our case, we want to be able to choose a custom seed. So if you want to share a level with a friend, you can also do so. And that is, we can, we can just write seed here. And in here, we can write any number we would like. So let's write something that's not too long. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. <laughs> Maximum of nine numbers. That looks nice. But of course, you can put any number you want. For now, I would like to go with this number so we can have a consistent result. And now, this is all we need in our fun credit. But I want to print the map so you can understand better what I did. Oh, I, for, I launched the room. We need world. So it's basically just a 2D table filled with false. That's basically all we did. And you'll understand why we did that in a second, because this array is basically what's going to shape our map. Now, we're going to create a function called generate. So it is going to be a void and we want to use it to generate stuff. But before that, we also need another function called check room. And in here, we want to give it some parameters. We want to give it an X, which is going to be an int, a Y, which is also an int remaining as in remaining rooms that we set up it is the same variable as rooms to generate so it's basically this variable but then it's decreasing every single time we actually generate a room so remaining is also an int and we also need general direction so we're gonna do general direction it is a vector Two, I'll explain what that is in a second. We want first room, and this is going to be a boolean. And what basically first room is, this is going to be a boolean that will say if we if this room that we are checking, because this function is called check room. So we're basically going to check a room in the array that we created. And if first room comes out as true, that means this is the ro this room that we are currently checking is the first room. We set first room by default to false. So if we do not actually send a parameter at the end, a boolean, that means it will automatically be false. That means it is not the first room. And that's basically all we need. Let's actually set it up to be a void since this is also a void. And let's do Let's come back here. Let's actually remove this and perfect. Now, what we want to do is we want to check if 
room count is bigger or equal to rooms to generate. That means we already generated all of the rooms that we need, so we can just return. We do not need any more rooms. So we're going to do if x is less than 0 or x is bigger than map width minus 1 or y is less than 0 or y is bigger than map height minus 1, we want to return. And what this basically is, since our map is defined in this array, if we go out of bounds from this array, we want to return. So if x is negative, it is not possible to find a negative number or a negative index in an array, so that's why we return. If it is bigger than the uh, map width, then it will also return, since the array is as big as the map width, basically. So yeah. Now, you also want to check if first room equals false and remaining is less or equal to zero, then we want to return. And that means we have no more rooms to generate. Now, we also want to check if map.x and y equals to false, or actually true, we want to return. That means this room has already been created. And if you do not know, since this is an array that's filled with false statements, since like this array entirely is full of booleans that are set to false by default. If a room is equal to true, that means that we want to generate that room. So it will be more uh, understandable as we go on. But for now, if the position of x, y in map is true, that means there is a room. If it is false, that means there is no room, basically. And here, if it is already set to true, that means the room already exists, so we don't need to do anything, that's why we return. If it is the first room, so if first room is true, then I want to set the first room position to be this x and y. Now, room count, we want to add the room count. If none of these functions are true, we want to do room count plus one. That means we're going to spawn a new room. And we want to do map dot x and y equals true. We want to set it up as true. Perfect. Now, we also want to create some variables to check which direction we want this room to go to. So if you want this room to go nor like after this room, we created this room and we want to now choose a direction if you want to go left, right, left, right, up and down. So yeah. Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's lesson we will be taking what we stopped doing last time and we're going to be finishing our generation script. So last time we stopped, we talked about how we want some variables to see which direction we want to go in. If you want to go north, if you want to go south, if you want to go east or west after we created this room. So how we do that is we're going to create a variable called north and it's going to be a boolean and we're going to do rand f. So it is a random function that will give us a float between 0 and 1. If rand f is bigger than 0 0.2, if general direction is vector 2 dot up, else 0 0.8. And this is what this is. This is an if function. What we did is if general direction vector 2 point up, is true, then we want to do 0 
If it's not, if this is false, then we want to do 0 0.8. And this is basically us setting up the chances of there being a north wall, south wall, east wall, and west wall, since this is all going to be random. Of course, you can change these variables to whatever you like, since this is all up to your preference, but I think this is what works best for me, at least. So we're going to do the same thing with south, but the only difference is we want to change this direction from up to down. So we can actually copy and paste all of this, since it is going to be the same. So we're going to do var uh, east and var west. We just need to change this to right and this to left. Perfect. Now, we want to check, we're going to do var max remaining. And it's going to be an integer. And we're going to do rooms to generate. And we're going to divide it by 4. I'll explain what this does in a second. I'll come back to it. So we want to check if the general direction is going north. Or this is the first room. I'll actually create some space. If the general direction is going north. So if you want to go north or if this is the first room. I want to check room again. I want to check it on the same x since this is going up. We just want to do y plus 1. And we're going to do max remaining. If first room. Else remaining. Minus 1. Since we already uh, added another room. So we want to remove one since this is the room and now we're calling the same function inside of itself so we're doing a recursive function basically we want to give it the general direction which is vector up vector two dot up if first room else general direction and we're basically going to do the same thing but depending on the actual direction so if south or first room then we're gonna do the same thing i know this is a little bit confusing but bear with me okay so what i did is is i basically finished this it is basically the same thing the only difference is we're adding plus one to y here we're subtracting here we're adding plus 1 to the x, and here we're subtracting, based on the direction, of course. So, x plus 1 is going to the right or east, so if east, we want to add that. And here, we want to give it a vector to the right, if it is the first room. If it's not the first room, then we're just going to give it the general direction. So, that's basically what we did. Now, that we finished this function, and it is... I would say this is the most complicated function we will have in this series. But finally, we've done with this. So we can now go back to our generate function. And we want to do check room. We want to give it a random seed or like a random starting position. So for me, I'll give it 3, 3, 0 for the remaining since we don't have any remaining yet. And for general direction, I want to give it vector 2.0, since we do not have any general direction yet. And we want to set this to true, since this is going to be our first room. And here, I want to call the generate function. And that's basically it. In a way, if I actually, for i in range... Let's actually show you what this does, basically. And we're going to do print, uh, I don't know. So it goes back to another line. For j in range, map height. We're going to do if, if map dot x and y. 
then let's actually create something x equals var x var string okay <laughs> um then we're gonna do string plus equals mm -hmm. and here if it is true we can just do this if it is true i want to add to string plus plus equals or oh, let's do o else string plus equals x the o is a room and x is not a room basically if the, 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 what is the issue here identifier x is not oh yeah it's i and g sorry about that and now if we actually run this uh, okay nothing actually happened for some reason. oh yeah we did not print the <laughs> we forgot to print it so we're gonna do string so what this basically does is, as you can see, we have a path generated. We have three rooms here and a couple of rooms here. So this is going to be our map. The X's are are not rooms. The X's are just going to be empty space. But the O's are going to be rooms that we generate. Each O is going to be one room. And these, all of these are going to be connected to each other through the pathways that we talked about earlier. And yeah. So yeah, that's basically it. That's what happens with the actual generation. All we have left is to instantiate the rooms. Since the actual generation is done, we have generated the position of each room. Now we just need to instantiate the room scene and open and close the pathways here, depending on the direction. So yeah. Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's lesson we'll be finishing our generation code that we still have not finished. And for now what I want to do is we want to add a script to the room since the room itself needs to have some functions. So we're going to save the script in the scripts folder as always. And we're going to hit create. Now what we need here is we need uh, some values. So what we're going to do is we're going to do export var inside width and it is going to be an int. We're going to do export var inside height. It's also going to be an int. We'll not be using these yet, but we'll use them later on and you will understand why. So the functions that I need to create now are called func north, basically. And what this function is, I want to make the north door open. So we're going to do this dot visible equals true. And I want to delete the north wall since we don't want a wall in the north anymore. So we're going to do q3. And what I want to do is I want to make everything visible. Basically, let's actually click so we can see. We want all of the walls to be visible, but I want all of the doors to be invisible. This is how we want the base room to look like. And based on these functions that we're going to create for the south and east and west as well. So it will determine which wall is going to be removed and uh, instead we'll have a door. So we want the south door to be visible equals true, but we want the south wall to be deleted. So dot q free, and we're gonna do the same thing with east. We want the eastern wall to be visible, but we want the east wall to be deleted and we're going to do the same thing again for west uh, west door dot visible equal true and we want to do west 
wall.q3. That's basically all we need to do in the room script for now, at least. <laughs> but yeah, now we can go back to our generation script here. And we want to create a new function, which is called instantiate rooms. And this is the function that will instantiate all of our rooms based on the map that we created. And this is going to be a void. And we want to check if we did instantiate rooms already or not. So if we did, we want to hit return. We do not want to create any more rooms. If not, we want to change rooms instantiated to true. So this function can only be triggered once. Now, we're going to do for x in range, map width. We're going to do for y in range, map height. And what we're basically going to do is we're going to check if map.x and y is equal to false, then we want to do continue. So it skips this current y and goes like to the other one. Since we do not care about the ones that are equal to false, but we care about the ones that are equal to true. So if it is true, that means it will keep on going and it will reach this code. We wanted to create a room. So we're going to do var room equals room uh, scene dot instantiate. So we're going to instantiate the room and we want the position of the room to be equal to vector two, the X and Y that we are getting from the map. And we want to multiply them by 816. And you might be wondering why are we multiplying it by 816? And that's basically because if you go back to our room and show everything, if you count from here till here, it's going to be 11. And if we multiply 11 by 48, that is 528. Am I miscounting something? I think. So here minus three and here we have 13. Okay, so it's, it's not multiplied by 11, but multiplied by 16. So 16 multiplied by 48. That is still not true. <laughs> Wait. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, multiplied by 17. I am sorry, but my mathematical skills are failing me. So we're going to do 17 multiplied by 48, and it is 816. Uh, that is why we are changing our position to 816, or at least multiplying it by 816. Since the x and y are gonna be either they're gonna be a they're gonna be a number between one and seven, since we set up the max width to be seven here. So after we do that, we want to check if y is bigger than zero, and map x and y minus one. So we're gonna check the one under it or on top of it at least. So we're gonna check the one on top of it. If the room on top of it is true, that means there is a room on top of the one that we just created, then we want a room to open a pathway to the north. And we're basically gonna do the same exact thing. So let's actually push this down. We wanna do that for south, for east, and for west. So. Uh, we want to change this instead to be map height, so it is less than map height, and plus 1 is equal to true, then we want south. And here, we just want to change this from y to x, and we want to check if x is bigger than 0, and map x minus 1 y, then we want to do west. 
if x is less than map width and map x plus 1, y is equal to true, then I want to do east. And this is basically us setting up our doors. Now, we want to check if it is the first room. So we're going to do if first room pause is a vector 2. We're going to give it the x and y. So we're checking if the room that we have right now is the first room. Then we want to do room dot generation equals self. And we forgot to actually add this variable. So we want something called var generation. And let's keep it empty for now. But so we're going to do var room dot generation dot self. And yeah, that's basically it to set up everything. So wait, we can actually just do this. So we're going to do, so we're going to call the parent, the biggest parent in the scene. We're going to do call deferred. We're going to do add child and we're going to give it the room. So we're going to do, and then this is what will actually spawn the room in our world. And now we want to add the room that we just spawned into our room nodes array. So we're going to do append room. And that's basically it. That's how we spawn our rooms in the map. Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's lesson, we will finally see our generation working. We finished the instantiate room function in the last lesson or at least almost finished it because we still need to add a new function. So we're going to do func calculate key and exit. This is going to be a void as well. We're just going to do pass since so we don't have to create this function right now as there is more important stuff. But for now, we want to do get tree dot create timer. So we want this to happen after a second, after we actually generated the rooms. We want to calculate the key and exit. So now we can actually call our instantiate room function. And we're going to do it after the generate. So after the generate function, or actually after the check room function, it, we can actually remove all of this. So after the check room function, I want to instantiate rooms. So let's actually test this out if we have any errors. And we currently do not have any errors, but we do not see any of the rooms. And that's because they are not, they did not spawn next to us. We need to move the player so he is a bit closer. So we're just going to reference the player like so. Global position equals first room position. We're going to multiply it by 816 like we did last time. Plus, we want it to be in the center of the room. So we're going to do vector 2, 262, and 262. Now, if we start this, we are inside of our level. And you can see it looks nice. We have an issue with this one, though, for some reasons. And that's because we forgot to hide the doors that we were supposed to, because we, we showed them last time for some reasons. But now, as you can see, it is the same map since we did not change the seed. But yeah, we have a procedurally generated map and it looks nice and neat, finally.